John David Jackson. What's up, champ? Can I go with the pleasure to talk to you, brother? It's good to be here with you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you out there in Florida, you was telling me it's 95 degrees out there. Yeah, well, it's 95, but with the humidity and, and this tropical thing going on, it feels like 100, you know, in some places, it feels like <laughs> 103. It's really oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Do you be tra- Do you still be out there working out yourself out there? I get up and, well, I, I just mainly run now. You know, I don't really hit the bags or do any other stuff. I just mainly run now. That's my biggest thing. I, I try to run the, the minimum of four miles a day. So wow. I, that's my thing. It's just running for me. Yeah. And yeah. watch what I eat. Yeah. You, oh, you run four miles a day? You trying to come yeah. back like Tyson? <laughs> Not, <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> no. It's over. Just, just trying to stay in shape. Just trying to stay just in shape. You know, just trying to stay in shape. Is, when, when we retire, we, yeah. we stop doing what we did to keep us in shape. When That's we were true. young, man. so you know, and, and and it hurts a lot of it because as you get older, the body starts to deteriorate. So you got to do something to at least stay in shape. That's right. That's right. That's right. I know when I first met you, you uh, you were down at the original Crunk Gym. Yes. And man, I was, I listen. I don't remember a lot of people. You had to be special for me to remember you. I was a little, you know, <laughs> a little younger back then, yeah. and you were special. You were special. I remembered you. you. <laughs> right. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You were that. so you were so slick, man. Um. You know, how'd you get so slick? Uh, you know, it, it's uh, this guy giving talent, man. You know, we're all good good fighters, man. It, it, we're just, it's just, you know, any fighter, it's, it's just your talent it is, it's a, it's a blessing. It's from the creator that, that we get, you know. Mm-hmm. Some some take a little bit further. You know, it's, it's like Roy Jones. You can't teach people how to fight like Roy because Roy is natural. I see a lot of guys try to try to emulate him. Yeah. get in trouble. You know, and it's like Ali. Ali's. Ali's style was just unique, and it worked for him. Yeah, and it may have worked for others to a degree, but never the, yeah. the way it worked for him. See, but if you take the same style, yeah. you can teach that to anybody because it, it was wrong. It was good for him, but it was wrong for everybody else, and it was mm-hmm. it wasn't orthodox. It was it yeah. was unorthodox, and it was great for him, but nobody else. So, you know, we're, all our styles are different, and, and, and you know, mine was just mine, and it worked for me, and maybe not somebody else. So, you know, that's the only difference. Were well, you really confident getting in there, knowing that you're a southpaw, and, and southpaws are kind of hard to predict? Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, but you know, actually, I'm right-handed, but the southpaw stance worked for me. When I first started boxing, mm-hmm. I, I I tried it. When my coach said, you know, let's put your hands up. Everything was yeah. southpaw. Yeah. And so they didn't they didn't know I was right-handed, but and, but the southpaw boxing wise came natural for me. Yeah. And I was just stuck with it. Yeah, when you when you were down at the original crunk, did you ever spar with Tommy Hearns? Who were some of the guys you sparred with? Uh, yeah, Tommy and I sparred. We, Tommy and I actually sparred in, in Vegas when he was going to fight James Kitchen. Okay. Um, but uh, I, and I sparred with Milton McCory. Okay. Um, um, he, he 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 was he was unfortunately uh, passed away. Uh, Dwayne Dwayne Thomas. I sparred Ooh, with Dwayne. Yeah, yeah, he a beast. Uh, you know, I sparred with Mike McCallum, but we sparred. After he left Kronk, uh, okay. So, but but the Kronk, those guys I sparred with. Then I sparred with some other some other fighters. Um, Gerald McClellan. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was right. And listen, <laughs> he, he, me and Gerald was boxing. We were sparring with. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And Gerald, he was a left hook. I thought I thought he knocked all my teeth out. It was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, wow. I, I, I just sit there. And, I just grunted. I didn't say anything. I was dazed. Yeah. And I, I said, man, we got to spar tomorrow. I got, I got to get this back. Yeah. yeah. The next wow. day I got the next day I got it, but that, but that day prior, man, I thought I, I thought he knocked all my teeth out, man. That brother could punch. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I, I, I sparred Frankie Lyle. That's probably a few guys. Wow. Have you ever saw a gym like that gym? Have you ever been at a gym that was as good as the Crunk Gym? I'm talking about well, far as the fighters. Actually, you know what? I, I I would say yes because when I first turned pro, you know, I moved to okay. Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and my teammates as amateurs are Rocky Lockridge, Johnny Bumpus, Pinkman Thomas. Mm. Yeah. So. You know, so when I turned pro, we all, I followed their trail. They all went to Philadelphia, and I yeah. followed them. So okay. once I got there, we're all in the same gym, and then you had Livingston Bramble, you know, you had, yeah. you had um, um, James Shuler. So we had, yeah. it, it, was, it was nice. I tell you, the, the difference between Kronk and Philadelphia was when you when you step in the Kronk gym and then Manu mm-hmm. stepped in the gym, Yeah, everybody tried to kill everybody. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> Everybody's trying to impress Trust me, I know. And they're going You're right. crazy. Like, hey, man, so yeah. you know, my, my thing was, I was never uh, try to, I, I never tried to get you in the gym. That wasn't my thing. Okay. So, you know, I, I just, I, I wouldn't try hard. I just do my thing. And, and mm-hmm. you know, if it had a little heated, yeah. it might get for a minute, but I, I get back to what I did best, you know, working on defense, doing my thing. But, man, when, when a man you stepped in the gym, 
Yeah. Everybody tried to kill everybody in Crunk. It, it was funny stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what brought you to Crunks? What brought you to the, the Crunk Gym? At the time, I, I was undefeated. I just beat Davey Moore the, mm -hmm. the year prior. And yeah. then me and my managers got into a bit of a conflict, and we had, we had, we had a bit of a problem. So mm -hmm. they tried to sit me on the shelf. But then I, I went to the commissioner, the commissioner yeah. at the time uh -huh. in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. He said, my contract, he said, this contract is null and void. He said, it's yeah. an illegal contract that, that you signed with them. He yeah. said, if I'm your daddy, I beat you right now. He said, if I sign this contract, he says, he says, so he said, don't ever, don't ever sign that kind of contract. Have a lawyer with you. He got mm -hmm. me the contract, and Don Turner, um, you know, we were friends, and he, and he said, man, I'm going to Detroit. Do you want to go with me? I said, why not? You know, I like to meet Emmanuel and see what's happening. So went to Detroit. Emmanuel and I hit it all off, and, and that was, you know, and at, at that point, I said, Emmanuel, I like you, but I'm not going to sign a contract with you. I, from that point on, I wouldn't sign a contract with anybody because I learned my lesson as far as I was concerned. So Emmanuel yeah. was cool with that. He understood my position. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, listen, well, here's the deal. And he told me what the percentage was and what he wanted. And I said, okay, cool. Yeah. We, had his hands, we had a handshake agreement. And from that yeah. day forward, it worked like that. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Now, the walls were, the walls were sweating. It was oh. so hot down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how how did you fit? <laughs> I feel like, we're, feel like we're in Florida, man. Listen, it, it was so hot. But, you know, I love that. I love that heat. Because yes. you, you, you can sweat and make, lose the weight easily. I love Absolutely. that heat, man. You know, the, the, yeah. um, the thermometer was broken. Yeah. Uh. Forever broken. It never was fixed. So it stayed 90, at least 95 daily in the gym. Mm -hmm. And with that heat, I loved it. Because it, it allowed me to work and do my thing and sweat real easy. And yeah. So I, 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 I never had a problem with that. I love that. I love that kind of that kind of atmosphere and that kind of uh when i'm in the room in the gym that, yeah. that, that kind of heat in you know because the, the worst thing in the world to me while well, i lived in philadelphia it was cold mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was the reverse it was ice cold in the gym man and, yeah you know, so when i went to detroit i loved it because the, the, the thermostat was broken and it was always yeah. 95 degrees in the gym uh -huh. yeah 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 you're right so look so i know you fought your last fight against david boone yeah. tko yeah. in 1999 where were some like who was like the hardest fights you had? Was it Bernard Hopkins? Yeah. Uh, was it Tr was it Trice? Yeah. Or was it that one guy you took the title from? That guy had over a hundred fights. Jorge uh, Castro. No, no. Well, actually, Jorge was was once they stripped me my title. Okay. They get they gave it to Jorge. I had to fight him for it. The oh. toughest fight, believe it or not, was when I won the middleweight championship. Reggie Johnson. Yes. Because Reggie was yes. like myself at South Point. He was and he was slick. And the one yes. thing that I knew, you know, my philosophy was I used to love to fight guys that would come towards me, the aggressive fighters. Mm -hmm. They were easy. But the yes. hardest thing for a fighter to do, especially a boxer, mm -hmm. is to fight another boxer. Because now you look in the mirror. Everything you exactly. do, because now, now, now you got to be more calculated. You got to you got you got to be more. You got to be slicker. Uh, you know, you you, you be calculated calculated in, in your thought process because now this guy is fighting the same way you are. When the guy yes. is coming at you, you know what he's gonna mm -hmm. do. That's easy, that's easy for you. Yeah, you're gonna pick them apart and look pretty and do your thing. But when the guy's boxing with you, yeah, now sometimes you have to be the aggressor. Your whole your whole game plan is different. So with Reggie, I knew I had to be a little bit faster and a little bit better than he was. But he, until like four in the morning before the fight, I just kept thinking, man, what am I going to do with this guy? Am I really as good as I, as I say I am? Because he made me yes. think. And then finally, about four in the morning, I said, man, bump that guy. I'm going to sleep. I'm gonna get him more. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna become champion. So yeah, he was to me. He was the hardest because. I had to be calculated in my moves. Everything I did, I had to think about it to make sure I offset what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I always he was my toughest fight, believe it or not. Even though you know it, it, was, it was a boxing match strategically for both of us, that yes. was the toughest fight for me. Yes. Do you do you think that um the, the fighters today are are actually better or tougher or more rugged than the fighters yesterday? Not really. I, I, they talk a good. A lot of them talk a good game. You know. Yeah. Because now we have social yeah. media. Say, so, oh, you know, yeah. I'm going to do this. Some are good. Listen, some are good, but here, here, here's, here's what, what I see on the mm -hmm. realm of boxing. It's not so much the fighters, but you don't have those old school teachers any longer. You know, we're all they're all dying out. Then you have myself, you and other guys. But yes, after us, today's fighters aren't being taught how to fight properly. You know, that's true. You know, that's and, true. And, and all they want is a mid man, someone that makes them look good. See, and, and, and you know, <laughs> Floyd, right. Floyd, Floyd shouldn't take this wrong, but Floyd created that because him, him, yeah. him, him and his uncle Roger, they were good at Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. That worked. That worked for them. Yes, and they, they memorized that. I yes. can't remember a seven points combination. Oh, I got a guy doing the ring, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. Right. That worked. It was. It, it worked so good and looked so pretty. Yeah, 
everybody wanted that same thing they were doing. But see, behind closed doors, him and Roger worked on other things. They didn't do that. They, they worked on other things. But that was just a sideshow for the public. And but that, right. that, that ruined a lot of people because now everybody wants to look pretty with the mitts. That's mix. true. I mean, hit yeah. that heavy bag. Because the bag, the heavy bag doesn't move. Hit the bag. When I was fighting coming up, we didn't do mitts. George okay. and Ben were not allowed to do mitts. We hit the heavy bag and we shadow boxed and double in the bag and then we sparred. He said, mm -hmm. yeah, there, was no, there was no mitt work. And that, that's the problem with today's fighters. They'd rather see a young guy who can make him look pretty on the mitts. They got an old school teacher going to teach him how to really fight. You know, put, them, put the mitts down. Let me show you how to box properly. They got all that's right. They, they, got, they, got, they got pads. They have um, those cones and all <laughs> the different true. gadgets they got now. It's, yeah. it's, not to, it's not teaching you how to really fight. That's true. And you know what? Emmanuel was big on that, too. He he wanted he wanted you to, to spar. He wasn't into that old pity pad and all that fast yeah. stuff. He said, yeah. he likes you to punch, knock out cell. When you pity padding, you ain't putting nobody to sleep. No, but I'm, listen, this, this is the side of the man, you, man. I love you, man. You, but when he did the mitt, sometimes he would be really, um, how do you say that? Um, like, like, like an actor. I mean, he, 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 you hit the mitts, he falls back <laughs> like, like a, you know it. Like, yeah. like, 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 he really hurt. Like, he really hurt. Yeah. Absolutely. It was, it was all mental. For, he made the, he did it for the fighter, for the fighter's mental. That, you're you absolutely know. right. You're uh, absolutely it was, right. It was funny stuff, bro. <laughs> hey, so, so what brought you, what brought you to, um, to Florida? What actually, I'm like, made you decide, okay, I want to be a trainer now. What made yeah. you decide to want to be a trainer? Well, you know, actually training was, was being a, becoming a trainer was never a thought in my mind. You know, my okay. trainer, Georgie Bitten, said, he said, man, you're going to make a great trainer one day. And I said, man, get the hell out of here. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to train fighters. They're hard hitters, you know. So yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. doing that. He said, mm -hmm. "No, no, trust me, son." He said, "You got what it takes to be a trainer." So I, and, I, and, and so I, I, you know, I let it go. I never thought about that. And then huh? I started working with a few fighters. Mm -hmm. And then one day, Shane Mosley, you know, we had worked together for his first fight with Ella Hoya. Behind yeah. the scenes, I worked with him. Mm -hmm. And so one day, he approached me to John, which become a head trainer. You know, so I mm -hmm. knew at that point that him and his father were finished, and whomever else he was training with. They were no, long, no longer together. So I said, okay, let's, let's do it. And, and okay. he was my first real fighter that, that I trained, you know, which was a blessing for me because, because of his name at the time. got mm -hmm. me a lot of work. Because it got me out there in the forefront of the yes. boxing world. And people would see me. So it helped me out. But, you know, before I got with him, I, you know, I, I trained a few guys. And I was like the lowest man on the totem pole. I carried a bucket, spit bucket. Mm -hmm. you know, one guy spit, him, spit him arm. I wanted to punch him in the head, but I couldn't. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, right? So I, I paid my own way by, by doing what I had to do. Like you said, I, I didn't try to be the front man and be the, the superstar in the, in the, in the, in the, in the corner. And yes, my job yeah. was to carry the bucket. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give advice. And I didn't, I didn't overstep my bounds and, and overtalk the, the head trainer. Because that's mm -hmm. not what, you know, old school, if, if you're, you know, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they didn't play that. You know, you go to the gym now, everybody in the gym wants to start shouting, giving advice to the fighter, telling them how to box. That's true. Instead of keeping your mouth shut and let the head trainer do his job. That's you true. Know, but, I, but I knew back then, listen, that, that where my place was as a trainer. So I wouldn't speak until it was my time to say anything. And, yeah. and, and if the head trainer didn't want me to say anything, I kept my mouth shut and said, okay, if your fighter gets beat up, that's on you. And I had to let it go. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So, you know, so my, my, my first, when I first got into boxing as a trainer, it, it was, it was kind of tough because I, I, knew, I know boxing, but I had to keep mm -hmm. my mouth shut. And I thanked Shane all the time because he was the first fighter that I got with. And luckily mm -hmm. because the level that he was on, Put me yeah. right there out in the front, which was nice. Yeah, yeah I talked to his um his brother his son um yesterday. His okay. son got a cool guy. Yeah. Nice yeah. humble guy. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> he yeah. picked my brain like I'm picking your brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> now when you that. when you started training Sergey Kovalev, yes. I mean how how I mean who gave you like who called you for that assignment? And yeah. um was it was it good working with him? I mean you did a lot for him. Yeah. Well, you know, Don Turner had it. Okay. And so, you know, once him and Don fell out, mm -hmm. you know, Don was pretty much done. But Don said, well, I, I got a guy that I think told, told, told his manager, I have the person, the right person for him because, yes. you know, Don, one thing about Don knows, I don't, listen, I don't babysit a fighter. That's not exactly. my job. My mm -hmm. job is to teach you and train you if you allow me to. And yes. so he said, spend with John. John's in Florida. The weather's nice. It'd be nice for him. So the funny thing was, see, no one, like, formally introduced us. He came okay. to Florida in a car. And step just show up in the gym one day. I mean, no one said, "Hey, man, John, this is Sergey. Sergey, this is John." You know, okay. we, had, we, had, we had a language barrier at the time. Mm -hmm. So, okay. we came to the gym, and you know, so I said, "Okay." So I said, "Show me what you got." And I said, "You know," and, and so the, the word was nobody wanted to train this guy because he was hard to deal with. I said, "Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. I'll give him a shot." 
Yeah. And so in the beginning, he was real humble. Okay. But, as, but with each passing fight, I guess he was trying to change. And after he won the title, now before before he won the title, I was his everything. Um, he trusted me, he believed in me, and he, I was I was the greatest. He said, "John will never will never part ways." That's okay, mm. no problem. Mm -hmm. But once he won the belt, yes, he did a three sixty on me. He just like changed the very the very next fight. He said, "I'm paying you too much money, ten percent. Can we cut it?" And I said, well, "I said, well, first of all, let me let me say this to you. I, I want you to be nasty." I said, "But." When you fought and I trained you for 10, six, six to 10 weeks, and you made $5,000, I didn't cry when I got 500. And oh, that's exactly. six or 10 weeks. Yeah. Said, so if you calculate that, I was making no money. I said, but now you're making a million dollars. You want to cut my purse because, because why? Because now you're making all this money? You know, first time he said, well, my mom's doing sick and all that. So I said, listen, I said, I'm going to be a man with you. I'm, let's, go, let's do 7% and never bring it up again. Because, you know, mm -hmm. you make a million dollars, that's still good money. Okay. He said, okay, the very next fight, oh, John, can we cut your purse again? I said, man. Wow. So you know, what I ended up doing, man, I went to his manager and, and Kathy Duke, and we worked out a deal. Okay. So they would cover whatever I didn't get from him. And I left him okay. because every, oh. every, for every passing fight, his head got bigger and bigger and bigger. And he thought he did it all on his own. But you forgot, exactly. you forgot all those hard days in the gym when no one cared about you. And we just we just worked. You know, we're making no money. Exactly. You know, it became difficult to work with because that was his thing. But you know, hey, and, and then he would start talking bad about me. I say, I, you know, I, I try to leave it alone. But exactly. When he was young and trying to do it, he was good. I give him credit. Yeah. He was hungry, and he did what he was supposed to. But once he became champion, his whole world just changed. That brother yes. went crazy. He went crazy. Right, right, right. I mean, it, word on the streets, he had a drinking problem, all kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, he, he came. You know, his his second defense. He got drunk in camp. You know, a lot of things I had to keep quiet because yeah. I didn't want to expose him. And, you know, I got this kid. I don't want you know, people to know his weaknesses. But, yeah. he, you know, he still had that same problem today. And it's gotten him in yeah. worse trouble than, than back then. But, you know, I would tell him, man, you know, that you shouldn't do as champion. Once you retire from boxing, mm -hmm. listen, if, if you want to drink, go do your thing. If you want to smoke, go chop a tree down and smoke that tree and have a good time. But right now, <laughs> this is, this, this is, this, these, are, these are your prime years. It's business. Let's not do that, but he couldn't see it that way, you know. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately for him, he had that problem that he still has. And, 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 and But, he, you know, he had a good run for a while, and, and yes. that was great for him. But he, he could have done so much more. Yes. If he didn't listen. You know, he told me, he would tell people I didn't, I didn't teach him. I can't teach you if you're not willing to learn. That's right. That's right. And, and that's, what, that's, what, that's what became of he, he didn't want to learn. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I said, okay. So, I, you know, only so much I could do. And then right. it's, it's, with each passing time, you know, it's like think about the real world. If I'm a, if I'm a worker, and every time I go to work, you start paying me less and less. Do you think I'm really give you my all? I for got what? you. Yeah. And that's what happens with us. You know, you, you keep, yeah. every fight you keep trying to cut me less and less. That's why right. Would I even, why would I even come to the gym and be happy to see you? Exactly. And exactly. That's, and that's what it became. You know, it just became more and more. And you know, unfortunately, it just you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. When once yes. he and I split up, he never looked the same fighter anymore. Exactly. It seemed like he was a headache. He became a headache. Yeah, you know, and, and most guys just at, at that point they just you know. And listen, I don't like like Buddy McGirt. I don't blame Buddy for taking the job. Yeah, because you need to feed you know you need to feed, feed yourself and, and you know if you, if your family feed them also. So that's I, right. I, you know, who am I to say I'm oh, on the job? No, no. If, you, if you get paid by him, God bless you. You know. Yeah. Whatever yeah. You, get, you trust me, you work for it, especially with him. So you yeah. know. <laughs> All right. And, and whoever else training, that, that's cool because I'm not, I'm not gonna knock it. I yeah. had my time with him. And my years yeah. with the best years. Now, whatever comes, you know, it happens. The proof in the pudding. He, he, since he and I left, he's not the same fighter he ever was. And Exactly. Exactly. We, I, I, have my own, I have my own way of training a fighter. Mm -hmm. And what I do, I try to bring out the best in you for what you need at that at that particular time. Yeah. And yeah. He knew how to, you know, coming to me, coming to me, he knew how to fight. And most fighters that I get, they say, you know, uh, I, say, I, I tell them, you already know how to fight. You don't need me yeah. for that. Right. You need me to try to become a better fighter. Better defensive fight and have better yeah. strategy per fight. Yes. Not that yes. you got to fight. You should know how to fight. Yeah. Him. Yeah, you get to me. And yeah. so he can't understand. He said, "Man, you're not teaching me. You know how to fight. You don't need me for that." Exactly. So you know, that was that. You know, so all in all, we had a good time when he was, you know, yeah. before he became champion. Once he became champion, he was difficult. So you think Andre Ward actually finished him? And did you believe that Canelo was going to do that to him? I didn't think Canelo well, would do him like that. Uh, well. You know, and, and since we, you know, you, when we, anytime you and I talk, we always keep a hundred percent. So yeah, here's here's this. He sold himself to he sold his soul to the devil for that fight. And I tell you why, because 
after the fight, he cried about, oh, Canelo has all these stipulations in the contract. And But guess what? You signed the contract before the fight. You knew all the wow. stipulations that, that Canelo had. The yes. weight difference, you know. So don't cry about it now because, see, yeah. you were guaranteed $3 million. See, what you saw was $10 million that they said you might get if the sales are great. Okay. But, see, but what you're guaranteed is three. So you're going to get the three. Yeah. But you're not going to get the 10. The 10 depends on later, you know, how many buys you got. See, when yeah. he saw that 10 million thrown at him, he went crazy and said, he didn't, he, listen, he sold his soul to the devil. And, and most fighters, I don't care, you're, we're not going to do that, man. We're, we had too much pride. But he, he was always a money hungry type guy. Okay. So, he has, you know, when he's crying about, oh, man, to the fight, oh, they did me wrong. No, you did yourself wrong because you knew going in and your team knew what you were doing. They all knew the money was the possibility that the money might be there for you. So you took it. But guess what? In reality, you you knew you you sold yourself out just for that for that money, and the bit you took, you didn't train. You know that's what you got because making weight was killing Sergey at that at that time. Okay, the weight was killing per fight. You know, as you get older, that, that weight has to hurt you, and that's what exactly. happened. Exactly, it caught up with him, and Canelo knew that. And like when they first signed the fight, I told everybody he signed the right the right guy to fight a light heavyweight because he's on his way down. Now you see he didn't sign the fight. Better be yet, did he? No, because Arthur was. Listen, <laughs> You know, yeah, boy, so, he's a puncher. He knew he's gonna punch your yeah. lights out. He, he knew what to get, and, and they, they picked the right fight at the right time to, to win the light heavyweight title. You see, since then he's given that title up. So, exactly. You know, they, they did the right move. They knew. They, they did the right move. Yeah, they knew exactly. The when you when you got the call, the train clears for Shields. I mean, how how was you feeling about that? Was you like excited, like you know, she she. Well, you know, it, it, was, I, it would be a challenge for me. I, never, I, I you know, I, I trained a few females. Mm-hmm. But never on that level. Okay. So, you know, um, tell you a funny story. She might, she might, she might get mad. But one day when Jim, <laughs> I, I never had this happen to me. She said, "Coach, I can't train today." I said, "What's the problem?" She said, "Well, it's that monthly time for me." So I fell out laughing. I said, "Hold it, that's a new one for me because no one's ever told me." You know, no okay. Told me that you know, they're okay. that monthly problem. I said, "Okay, that's, yeah. that's a new one for me." So I said, "You go okay. home, go home, do your thing." But you know, I, I, once I got the call, I was cool with that because it was a new challenge for me, and you know. Everybody likes new challenges, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, some, some people say, man, you don't want to train. And I said, why not? She's a boxer to me. Yeah. She's yeah. not a female. She's a boxer. And once I got to know her, she was cool, man. She was, she was, you know, and she has more heart than most of the guys that I train. Exactly. You know, she exactly. Wants, she, you know, she's on a top level. So we've had a great relationship. And, you know, she, you know, one day she told me we're in England. She said, you know, you're like family, man, because we, we were so cool. She you like family to me. I say I appreciate that, you know, because I like to have some kind of rapport with my my fighters. Mm-hmm. And ours is real nice, you know. I, we, we 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 laugh, we joke, and when it's time to get in the ring, I tell you, listen. Once from the gym, that's my office. You can't mess with me, man. That I, whatever I say goes. And just I said, just listen to me. I'll never lead you in the wrong path because as long as you're winning, I'm winning. Why would I screw you up? Absolutely. Said, She's cool when she give me you know her 110 percent of undivided attention when we're in the, in the gym. Hard, a hard worker, right? Oh, very, listen, very hard. You know, she definitely works hard. You know, and you know, most guys say, "Man, you know, uh, she's a female." I said, "But listen, man, she, she, you know, she wants to win. Mm-hmm. Her attitude is once she's in the gym, it's all business. That yes. she wants to win, and, and like I told you, you, know, she has to me, she has more heart than most of the cats that I know in boxing because mm-hmm. she wants to, she wants to stay on top of that pinnacle and be the best female of all time. Yes, yes. Do you, do you think she's the goat right now, the greatest woman of all time now? I think, I, listen, and, and not because I know her, but I think she definitely has that right to, to, to make that claim because let's take let's take her and um, Layla Ali. You know, mm-hmm. Layla's, and I tell everybody, you know, Layla, you know, she said, failed to realize she got her name, her recognition because of her last name. Exactly. It wasn't because of her. Because if, right. if, it had been, if her name would have been Layla Johnson, they wouldn't, <laughs> get, they wouldn't have cared. They wouldn't have cared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But because of her last name, who her daddy was, yeah, what she got, what she got to, and because she's not half the fighter that Clarissa is, and you know, so for her to even call herself the greatest, she shouldn't do that because she never fought in Wolf. Yeah, exactly. In Wolf, she ducked in Wolf. Trust me. Yes. She never fighting in the top fighters within her division at the time when mm-hmm. she fought um Christy Martin. Christy was overdone. Yeah, that's she, true. She, you know, that's and, true. And, and, you know, so. You know, she never fought those that you know Clarissa fights. Whomever steps in the ring with her, she want to. You know, she 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 wants a girl that be in the amateurs. Uh, Marshall, the girl uh, I can't remember her first name, but the girl Marshall. She wants that fight. Yes. And, you know, every challenge that that comes her way, she will accept it 
you know, I said, listen, make sure you get that contract signed, get that money for you, you know, just like, she <laughs> yeah. definitely wants, you know, she will fight any and every female out there. She's exactly. Not a high, you know, so Layla can't make that same claim because she never did, you know, yeah. when she fought uh, Jackie Frazier, you know, Jackie Frazier never really fought. You, she never fought. She had a few right. fights. Yeah. So you know you can you you can you can't measure that 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 with greatness because you fought the daughter of of your of, of your of your father's most vicious opponent that ever mm -hmm. fought. You know, Joe fought Ali. Joe was trying to kill him. You know, Joe, exactly. Joe was trying to kill Ali. You know, and so yeah, you, you can't make that same claim. So you know, to, to say to answer your question, the, the, the greatest right now, she puts uh, Clarissa puts herself number one in that field. Then you have a bunch of other girls that might make the claim down the road but Layla you know she shouldn't really make that claim because she had her career was pretty much laid for her because about because of her daddy and not because of her exactly exactly she um you know she has won two gold medals yes. she is the fastest to win world titles in multiple yeah. divisions yeah you, you know I don't want to play the race game but I believe yeah. she's a lot bigger than, than she even being green credit for She's been on um, Steve Mark Harvey's show and yeah. all kind of stuff. I mean, so what what is it going to take for her to even get to where she needs to be at? You know, the other girls that that won the the Olympics, the yeah. gymnastics and all them, yeah. they yeah. just making all this buku money and they yeah. getting talked about and all that. What do you think is going to actually help? You know, take for her to actually even go even way farther because she's yeah. big. If she was a dude, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, like I tell her, I said, listen, I said, you know, don't don't let those things get you down, number one. And number two, just keep striving. I said, because yeah. the more you get your name out there, especially in today's society with social media, it yeah. works for you. I said, yeah. never get down because of who you who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, unfortunately, a lot of females are pay less than the male. The male. Exactly. Counter. Exactly. Said, so what you do is just keep doing your thing. I said, you know, you, you got a great team behind you. Let them keep doing their thing. I said, and stay on top of them. Mm -hmm. And make sure what they're doing for you is the right thing for you, and, and just yeah. you know, with any opportunity they are for you, take it. I said, long, long, as long as it's, it's, it's smart for you, exactly. You know, it's not something that, that you know that belittles you. I said, take mm -hmm. it because as long as you're in front of the camera and people yeah. see you, and your name's always out there, it yeah. generates more money, more more popularity, and more money for you. Exactly. And, you so know, and that, that's what she has to do at this point, a uh, uh, stage of her, of her life. She's still blessed to be young enough to do those things. She's not thirty; she's twenty four. Uh, she made just on 25, but you know, she, she, she's still at the prime of her life. So right now is the best time to do whatever you got to do to make, generate that money for yourself later on, later on in the future. Right. So you being, you being more than just a trainer to her, you being a mentor to her, you family for real, for real. Yeah. yeah I talked to her about, you know, I, I tell her about the business of boxing and you know, I tell her the downfalls that I went through, you know, listen, we, we're not all brain surgeons growing up in boxing. So we learn as we go along, we get a head bump every now and then. Oh, I can't do that same mistake next time. Exactly. So the things that I did good, or bad, I tell her. You know, I, I just honest with her. The things I did wrong that I shouldn't have done, you know, think about this 84 Olympic team. I was part of that group. Mm -hmm. But I turned pro before the before the Olympic trials even, even took off. And I and I was sent a letter, an invitation, not even to try to get on, you know, to make to make the, 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 the trials. I was already invited. Yeah. But I, I turned that down because, you know, I, I had a few bad calls and I figured, you know what, I'm not gonna make this team anyway. Yeah. And you know, real quick. I was sitting in the room with Pat Napier, head coach, late 83, and I said, Pat, I'm going to go down to 147. And, uh -huh. and, and he said, no, no. I said, well, I said, man, I said, man Mark can't knock me out. I said, I got him. Yeah, said, yeah. Down. Here's the problem. Yeah. He says, even if you even if you beat Mark, you're not yeah. going to I said, Mark's already, already in. I said, you know. Okay. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, no, trust me. Mark is already there. He said, stay at 54 and do your thing. And then okay. he said, you know, so we, what we're trying to tell him was, hey, they already got their position. Their people. Politics. So, and he said, you know, at 54, you got a better shot, but 47, you won't get it. So I said, okay. And yeah. once, you know, once I, once I didn't make it, and, I, and, I, and one of my fights, I, I thought, you know, I had one fight where I fought a guy, and after the fight, yeah. Charlie Cinco came to me and said, John, I thought you won that fight. I yeah. said, I thought I won it too, but three, three of the five judges said I didn't. And that was yeah. my breaking point. It was, it was the U.S. Nationals in 83, and I said, you know what, enough is enough for me. I'm not going to yeah. wait I'll waste another year in 84 and not, you know, not, not make this team. So even though I chose that route, that route, they made my hard, my, my role was a little bit harder, but it, you know, I still got that. I won two world titles without a major promoter. Exactly. Or a major man, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, one time a major manager. So, you know, it worked for me. It was a harder role and I appreciate it. I, listen, boy, in hindsight, I should have went to the trials at least because I, I might got a better shake with a better promoter 
uh, yeah. you know, our, our manager. But it, yeah. you know, it worked for me. And like I told Chris, see, that was one of my that was one that was my choice. And life uh-huh. my choice. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Yeah. Yeah. When it was all said and done, at least at least I walked away. A lot of my friends didn't walk away with any any titles. Okay. Uh, they they broke, you know, and they, they can't talk. They walk yeah. they talk, you know. So I did okay. I didn't make the money I thought I should have made. You know, you know, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't walk from boxing a rich person. Yeah. But I walked away with my with my health and my faculties intact, so I can still walk Absolutely. And, walk and I can teach this game. Yes. Yes. Do do you think with um with with, with three minutes? Three minute rounds, as far as with um the females, do you think it'd actually be better for the females to fight three minute rounds? I think it would. I, I tell you why, because with three minutes, and, and and not in a bad way, but there'd be more stoppages, more knockouts. The women, it'd, it'd, it'd be more exciting for them. You know, two minutes. By the time that second minute comes, we just get wound up, and yeah, you know, and, and and most females, believe it or not, that I've spoken with, especially yeah. Clarissa, they yeah. want that three minute. They want that extra exactly. minute, and yeah. they feel they deserve it. And hopefully they keep pushing for it because it's going to separate the the, the, the strong from the weak, and and, that, and mm-hmm. not in a in a bad way where it's going to girls going to get hurt. But yeah. you'll see more stoppages and, and it'd be more exciting fights. And you uh-huh. know those they, they they can't rise yeah. to, to the top, then they yeah. just got they just got to go and let's hope okay. they can do their thing. But I think that extra minute would be it would make for better fights. Do um do you do y'all have a fight um schedule? She has a fight. It, it was, they pushed it back from August to September, so it's going to be in the middle of September. Okay. I think the young lady name is Declare. I think her name is. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a fight they got postponed, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to be good. She's okay. going to grab that belt too, then, right? Got to, you know. Listen, at that <laughs> point, you know, either either she'll wait for um, the young lady. She beat in, she beat in Detroit uh, two years ago at uh, fifty four. Uh, she, but she, yeah. you know, you have to wait for her, but. You know, she has like I told you, you have a lot of good options. You have, you know, okay. so now's the time, and you yeah. know, grab that. And, and if you can get Layla, you know, I don't think you have. I don't think yeah. you can get ten million dollars. <laughs> right. If you, if you do, God yeah. bless you. But yeah, I, you know, you might make the winner might you know because they're, they're talking about winner take all. Winner gets yeah. ten, loser gets five. That ain't yeah. <laughs> that ain't exactly. Happen. Exactly. But the, but the winner might get five, loser might get three, two or three. Yeah. But you know, listen, yeah. take that because yeah. that's more than most females make. Exactly, and, and if you take that, it's a step up for the, for the female because now down the road, someone you might pay, you might make your path for some other young lady to make yes. that money, maybe five years from now, ten years from now, and she can say, "What well, Clarissa, was, you know, help me get there because she got this money for this fight." So exactly, if, if you don't get ten million, don't be sad. If you get five yeah. million, you're still doing. Yeah. Money. Do you th- realistically though? Realistically, do you really think that fight gonna ha- actually happen, or do you think Layla is just using um, Clarissa's momentum to keep her thing, what she's doing out there? Well, you you, you, you kind of you know you know you, you kind of said it right, but I'm hoping I'm hoping right. that the purse is so great that, that, that yeah I'm that, hoping y'all get it. <laughs> right. she, she can do it, you know um, exactly. It's like you said, you know, right now she, it, it puts her back in the spotlight. She can talk her yeah. trash. Exactly. You know, she might talk into a substitute position where she has to fight. You know, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, you know, sometimes fighters. Here's what I say, you know, don't your father was great. Your father was yeah. great, but, but but he stayed around too long. Yeah. If you be smart, you won't follow in his footsteps. But you know, yeah. greed. Sometimes greed takes over, man. If they offer the absolutely. Hey, every listen. Every fighter has a price. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I have, I have, I have a price. You know. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah. If, if you thought about face. All yeah. Price, you know, I, funny thing. I'm glad we're talking. I got a call about three weeks ago. Yeah. From, from a reporter in Argentina. He said Castro wants to fight me a third time. Okay. Said, okay. So my, my first answer will ask anybody talking about two million dollars. <laughs> no. Yeah. I said I'm, 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 I, I got to go over there, and I fought him twice. Second time I got robbed. I went over there. I knew that, but yeah. they paid me what, what I wanted, and mm-hmm. it, was, it was great. So I, you know, I said I said I'm gonna take a shot. I knew I could beat him. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd beat him. They got the decision, but that's okay. But hey, listen, at this stage, at this stage of my life, in this age, yeah, pay me. you got to pay exactly. me. Exactly. Period. And I'm, I'm Period. talking about nothing. A hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. <laughs> I need some millions, so absolutely you flat out. You give me two million dollars plus training expense money. Exactly, you know, <laughs> exactly. Everybody, every, every fighter has, has yeah. That, you know, okay, I'll yeah, do yeah. I listen. I wish you. I wish I would have had you in a camp with me, man. You know what I'm saying? We was real close to working. Yeah, I had yeah. a. You yeah. know, I had them. I had my team in the line yeah. and all that. Yeah. It was hard. But yeah. what would have been the game plan? What would have been the game plan to beat Charlo? If you'd have been in camp with me, what would have worked on? Oh, you know, everybody says he's tough. Everybody has flaws. Yeah. Um, which one? Which one? The, uh, the young, the, the junior the, the older one, the older one, he's the stronger one. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he was, he was junior middleweight. He moved, he middleweight now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, boy he, though, um, strong guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think with him you got to box. You got to be smart. You know, but not not, not not all all over the ring. Okay. You got to you got to trap for him and just not you know not be there when, okay. he, when, he, when he tries to, to go for it. But walk, yeah. you know, you can walk him around the ring because okay. he's, you know, he's hittable. And, yeah. And, 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 so, um, we, we listen. We had a good game plan. Okay. We broke him down. You and I would sat down and broke him down since the match. watching him, and I would ask yeah. you what you see, and then yeah. I'll tell you what I see him together. We yeah. made that plan work. Right, kill a body to head or fall. Right. Hey, it is. <laughs> for most cats, some guys got pretty good body, but most cats, they're gonna fall. They're gonna fall. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, man. You know, that's our time, man. Yeah. It was really good talking to you. Anything you want to tell to the people that's listening in? Any final words? I just, you know, listen, now that this, this boxing is back on the scene, you know, if you can, mm-hmm. just support boxing all you can because, you know, in the near future, there should be some great fights out there. I think a lot of these guys at this point now with this virus had taken mm-hmm. over, now yes. they, 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 they not only want to fight each other, but they need to fight each other because they want, they want to make that who's the best and the money part of it. So I think now that once it gets back to growing, I think the best will finally start fighting the best because yes. you know, they've lost about, honestly, about six months time. So a lot of guys get old. So now they got yeah. to pick it up. And I, I, think, I think the best will start fighting the best because they know, man, the clock's ticking. Yes. And if I don't get it now, I might not never get that money. And, you know, so hopefully just tell the fans, man, just support boxing all you can and, 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 and demand the, the, the fight, demand the best fight, the best. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. You ain't got no social media, anything you want, you know, the people to follow you at in case you, they want to catch up with you. Okay, I'm old school. Old school. I, just thought, you know, <laughs> I knew it. All, all, all I do is on Instagram, John David Jackson. That's it. But, right. but like, you know, I talked previously about a couple weeks ago. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to start doing what you're doing, give me a podcast and, and start yeah. just you know, doing it. You because know, it's, yeah. it's good that it's good that we, you and my, you, myself, others start teaching and helping these fans understand what boxing is all about because we've Thanks. been there and That's you know, right. the hard work that we went through you know because a lot of these report i hate to say it, a lot of these, these writers or whatever these boxing guys they never, yeah. they never boxed in their life and then you know the stuff they say is you know they fabricate stuff exactly and the, people, the people should hear from us and what we went what we've gone through we can tell our stories we all got a story trust me you know, absolutely something, something didn't go right here something didn't go right there it might have been our fault it might have been the promoter's fight it might have been the manager's fault but it didn't go right and we can tell our story you know, to be honest, if you can, if you can't, then say whatever you got to say. But, you know, because of some things that we did that we shouldn't have done, mm-hmm. our career may not have gone right. Now, yeah. it might be somebody else's fault, but if we can tell our story, it might yeah. have to, it might have to the, the next generation of fighters that come up to understand yeah. mentally what they got to do and to be mm-hmm. sincere about this business. Because this business, you can't get hurt if you don't take it serious. For sure. You're right. Yeah, so, you're right. All right, right, my guy. I'll yeah, be definitely. in touch with you, man. Much love to you. Appreciate you. A bark, a bite, a strong handed right. We out. John <laughs> David go, Jackson. Thank you, man. Appreciate K-9. Thank Good you night. Very much. Thanks. All right. Thanks. One love. Definitely. Right on.